I've been ordered to give you a quick overview of command and control in combat mission touch. Though you outrank me, I'm your drill instructor for today, so right now your butt is mine. I ain't fluffy and college educated like you, sir, so pardon the occasional four letter word, or don't pardon it. Now before we begin, show me your war finger. If that ain't a war finger, I ain't scared. Show me your war finger. Outstanding. Now that is a goddamn war finger. First, basic navigation. Drag on the ground with a single finger to pan your view. The ground will move in whatever direction you drag it. Outstanding. To zoom out for a bird's eye view, pinch with two fingers. Good. Now reverse the pinch with two fingers to zoom back in. Well, f me. You're going to learn this after all. Though it may be tempting for a college educated Nancy Pants officer like you to spend lots of time in the bird's eye view doing some kind of executive management, this drill instructor implores you to keep your camera down low with the troops in order to maintain tactical awareness. To command well, you need to see what they can and cannot see from their viewpoint. Yes, sir. Just like that. Outstanding. To rotate the camera, place two fingers down and turn them clockwise. Excellent. Turn them counterclockwise to rotate the other direction. Now the white star icon on the map is the victory location. The goal of a battle is to occupy that location and deny the enemy access to it. At the beginning of a battle, you place the troops. Just drag them into the positions where they should start the battle. You may drag them by their icons or by their bodies. They must be placed inside of the area outlined in green. Now go place the rest of the troops. Place vehicles on any open ground. Infantry can be placed either on open ground or in buildings or in woods for cover. Also remember that to get information on a unit, you can tap and hold on its icon. Pretty good, Fluffy. When you've finished placing the men in their starting positions, press the finish button to proceed to the orders phase. In this phase, you issue orders to the troops. While you're doing this, the enemy is also issuing orders to his troops. This is your chance to shine. Your men want to kill every goddamn hun they can find, but they need your orders to do it. During this phase, time is frozen until both you and the enemy have finished issuing orders. Imagine that, frozen time. To issue orders, first select a unit. You select either by tapping on a unit's icon or on its body. Once selected, an orders panel appears above the unit. Tap the order you wish to issue. The orders are Move. This will order the unit to move at a medium pace. 
This speed of movement will not make infantry tired and will allow a good chance of spotting the enemy while underway. Move fast. This will order the unit to run or drive quickly. This will make infantry tired, which makes them fire less accurately and can make them more likely to lose discipline when under fire. For vehicles, this increases the chance of a mishap, like bogging down or throwing a track. It also reduces the chance of spotting the enemy while on the move, and increases the chance of the enemy spotting you, since you're easier to see when you're moving around like a bat out of hell. Hunt. This will order the unit to move slowly toward the destination, keeping their eyes peeled for the enemy, and to immediately stop as soon as it spots any enemy unit. Stop. This orders the unit to clear all orders and sit tight. That includes clearing out any target you may have specified for it previously. Target. This will order the unit to target a specific enemy unit, a building, or a point on the ground that you specify. Some vehicles also have reverse and disembark commands. Reverse is a useful way to keep a tank's thicker front armor facing toward the enemy where it belongs. Disembark allows vehicles like half-tracks to drop off any infantry they are carrying at a specific location of your choosing. After tapping a command, tap on as many destinations as you require for the command. A waypoint will be created at each one. For example, place a waypoint near those buildings. Then south in the street, farther east along the street, and along the east side of the town. Wrong, for brains, I didn't say to go into town. Hit the undo button. Now press the checkbox button to complete your waypoints. When the action starts, the unit will move from one waypoint to the next, carrying out your orders in sequence. You may mix as many different types of orders as you require to carry out your plan. Whatever orders you issue, remember that if a unit is under extreme stress, such as being close to high volumes of incoming fire or suffering casualties, then it might temporarily disobey your orders and try to save its own butt instead. When this happens, give me their names and unit numbers so that I can bring a world of pain onto their undisciplined But there's nothing you can do about it during the battle. When you and the enemy have both finished issuing orders, the turn is calculated. Use some of that fancy patience you learned in college during this time. Once the turn is calculated, the action begins. You can watch as your men carry out the orders that you gave them to the best of their abilities. Now I know this is hard for a high-flying college officer like you to accept, sir, but during this time you are purely a spectator. You can only watch as your troops carry out your orders. You can watch the action from different angles by moving your camera. You can even move time forward and backward with the slider at the bottom of the screen. This allows you to replay parts of the action from as many angles as you like. But whatever the outcome of the turn, all you can do is watch as 30 seconds of real time elapse. come back into the order phase again. You and the enemy now issue orders to your men again, 
so you both have a fresh chance to adjust your battle plan based on how events unfolded in the previous turn. To win a battle, occupy the victory location on the map and minimize your own casualties while maximizing the enemies. When the battle ends, whichever force has the most troops near the location is awarded victory points for occupying it, as well as a few points for casualties. When you own the victory location, it is blue. When neither you nor the enemy unambiguously own the victory location, it appears white. And of course, when the enemy owns the victory location, it appears red. These color schemes are based on the intelligence that is available to you at the time. Now for a little bit of tactical advice. Tanks have strong frontal armor but weak size and rear, so keep your tanks facing the enemy to keep them alive. Look at that! Bounce right off! Outstanding! But on the other hand, when you stick your dick out in the wind... Oh, not pretty. Also remember that German tanks generally have better guns and armor, especially their Panther and Tiger tanks. When you're commanding American forces, you have two ways to beat them. Either get in really close or flank them. At almost any range, you can penetrate the weaker side and rear armor just as these two Hellcats are doing from a good ambush position. hoo -ah. Getting in close is the other way to go. But it's risky. If you're commanding a German force, try to keep the Americans at longer range where your superior gunnery and armor give you a decided advantage. big and loud and scary, but in truth they're easy to kill. If any infantry gets close to a tank, they can kill it by close assault. Americans can also kill tanks in the side or rear with bazookas at short range. German infantry can kill tanks with Panzer Shreks or, if very close, with Panzer Faust. Those <laughs> Panzer Faust are real killers because lots of German infantry carry them, even plain old riflemen. Let's just keep it real simple. Try to keep your tanks the heck away from all enemy infantry. Sometimes you will have forward observers under your command. Use them to call in artillery strikes. Order the observer to target a point on the ground. It will take one or two turns to call in the fire mission and then to call in corrections on the first few spotting rounds that come in. Once the artillery is all lined up, they will fire for effect and blow the shit out of everything in the area. If you move the spotter or if you change his target before the fire mission has finished lining up, then it will have to start over again as a new fire mission. So pick your target carefully and then do not change it. There's plenty more to know, but that's all we have time for today, sir. For additional information, training, tips, and tactics, join us on the forums at www.battlefront.com. 
Let's get back to the front, sir. There's plenty of work to do. May God be with you. 